chapter 11. If you want to turn your Bible this morning, John chapter 11. As uh, Brad said, please stay for a cup of tea, cup of coffee after the service and um, shake hands and get to know somebody you don't know. Tonight at 5 o'clock we'll continue our journey through Jeremiah uh, chapter 19 and 20 where Jeremiah said, I could not stay. Talking about the Word of God. And then uh, Wednesday night we continue our journey in Hebrews 11 Greater Riches. That's all of our message. <coughs> And the Iwana Clubs will start back up on the 12th of February. Sparks at 3.30. That's the five eight-year-olds. And then the Iwana Club at, at 6.30.
6.30, that's the 9 to 12 year olds, that'll start back up on the 12th. So this morning we are going to focus on the shortest verse in the Bible. And if you didn't know which one that was, you will after today. But it teaches us a lot about our Savior. We'll start in verse 28 of John 11. The Bible says, And when she had so said, she went away and called Mary, her sister, secretly, saying, The Master has come and calleth for thee. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. The Jews then, which were with her in the house, and comforted her, when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth unto the grave to weep there. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said, Where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold, how he loved him. And that's where we'll stop. And the title of the message is Jesus Wept. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we love you. We thank you for the privilege to be here, to assemble as a body, to focus on your word. May we now open our hearts and hear from you and allow the Holy Ghost to do a work in our hearts through your powerful word. And Lord, may we leave change. We love you. We want to glorify you in this, this service. And we pray you'll be pleased in all that's said and done now. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So we see here that Jesus returned after the death of Lazarus. We know what happens later on. He raises Lazarus from the dead, which was an exciting thing. And these are his sisters, Mary and Martha, Lazarus' sisters. Um, and so when Jesus returned, after Lazarus had already died, he, if you read the whole story, he held back on purpose because it was his plan to raise Lazarus from the dead to show that he had power over death. But in the midst of that, we see uh, so much about Jesus in his interaction with Mary and Martha. So obviously they were friends. We can see that there in verse 28. Uh, when they said, the master has come... So, on the one hand, they were friends, but on the other hand, they also understood that Jesus Christ was the Master and was the Lord. Uh, over in chapter 13, if you want to turn over there, Jesus made this very clear, John 13, 13. The Bible says, You call me Master and Lord, and you say, Well, for so I am. Jesus said, It's right to call me Master. It's right to call me Lord. And Mary and Martha, though they were had a friendship... They still referred to Jesus Christ as Master and Lord because they understood who he was. And, and we see then that um, once, once they were able to finally meet and, and acknowledge that Lazarus was dead there in verse 32 of our passage, it says, When Mary was come, she fell down at his feet, saying, Lord, if thou hadst been here, if, if you had been here, my brother had not died. If, if you would have made it back earlier... You could have kept Lazarus from dying. You could have healed him. And that, that's her, her perspective is, of course, she knew Jesus had the power to heal. She would probably witnessed it herself many times, Jesus healing the multitudes. But it didn't even enter into her thinking the possibility that after lying in the tomb for three days, that Jesus could actually bring someone back from the dead. And... It's good that she had this, this you know, trust in Christ that he had the power to heal, but she, I don't think she at this point understood that he also has the power to bring back from the dead. It's one, it's one thing to prevent death through healing. It's another thing to actually bring someone back. Uh, but if you look up in verse 15, as Jesus was talking to the disciples, he said, And I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent that ye may believe. So he's talking to his disciples. When the disciples told him that Lazarus was sick, Jesus intentionally stayed back. And then eventually, he said, Lazarus sleepeth. And they said, it's good, Lord. He needs his rest. And then he, the Bible says he plainly said, Lazarus is dead. 
And so Jesus waited so that he could come back and perform this amazing miracle of raising Lazarus from the dead. But before all of that happened, what we see here is just a glimpse of our amazing Savior and his humanity and being that example for us. So in verse 33, the Bible says, When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping which came with her, he groaned in spirit, and he was troubled. And so we see a lot in this passage, but the first thing that we see is the amazing love of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The Bible says, look up at verse 5. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. They had a very special friendship. And what we see here is the love of Jesus Christ. If you look in chapter 13 of John, verse 1, the Bible says this is just... Just as Christ was assembling in the upper room with his disciples just prior to going to the garden, John 13, 1, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. He loved them unto the end. That's talking about his disciples, talking about us. Because not long after this, Jesus displayed that love by being willing to suffer and die as our substitute on Calvary. And so the first thing that we see here in this interaction with, of Jesus with Mary and Martha and, and their friends is the, this amazing love. And you know, the Bible teaches that God wants us to have this same love for one another. And Jesus in John 13, he said, I want to give you a new commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. What made it new? The, the, the addition, as I've loved you. Because in the Old Testament, they were told to love their neighbors themselves. The book of Deuteronomy, that was one of the great commandments, Jesus said. But, but now Jesus said, I'm going to add something to that. I want you to love one another as I have loved you. I want your love to be that kind of love. A sacrificial love. An unconditional love. You know, the Bible tells us in 1 John, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. And so what we see here is the Lord Jesus Christ being our example. You know, the Bible says in 1 John 2, 6, He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. And so Jesus here is being an example for us. He came for many reasons. He came to preach the word of God. He came to die for us. But he also came to be an example. And the Bible says that we're to walk as he walked. And the first thing that we see in this passage is just this amazing love. And this is the love that, that God wants us to emulate. This sacrificial, deep love for one another. But the other thing that we see here, it says in verse 35, Jesus wept. Now Jesus didn't weep because Lazarus was dead. He's about to bring him back from the dead. So why did he weep? It's a good question. Shortest verse in the Bible, but it says so much, doesn't it? Jesus wept because his friends were weeping. He didn't weep because of Lazarus. Lazarus is about to be an amazing example to the world. He wept because Mary and Martha and their friends were weeping. And what we see is not only his love, but we see his compassion. Go to Matthew chapter 9, if you would. We see an amazing compassion of our Savior Jesus Christ in taking the time, if you will, to actually weep with them. Notice, notice Matthew 9, verse 36. When he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. <coughs> and Jesus Christ teaches that we're to have that kind of compassion. 1 Peter 3 says, Be all of one mind, having compassion one of another. We're to be compassionate because Jesus was compassionate. We're to be like Jesus. And what we see in this Jesus weeping with his friends is this amazing compassion. But not only that, we also see empathy. And the Bible teaches we're to have empathy, but Jesus Christ 
was relating to their pain. If you go to Hebrews chapter 2, and I'll explain what I mean by this. Jesus Christ not only understands all of our temptations, as we'll see here in a moment, but he also understands our pain. And when Christ took upon himself the form of a human, the form of a servant, he, he, he did that not only to die as our substitute, but also so that now, as our high priest, when we come to Christ with a, with a weakness or with a temptation or even with a hurt, Christ knows exactly what we're talking about because he's been there. That's, that's what we mean by empathy. Notice Hebrews 2, verse 18. For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. In other words, because he understands the temptation, it makes him empathetic to our temptation. Go to Hebrews 4 now, in verse 15. It's a very important truth here, Hebrews 4, 15. It says, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Now think about what that verse is saying. That is saying that you, you will never face a temptation that Jesus hasn't faced. That's what it says. All points. Tempted like as we are, yet without sin. And so what we see here is the empathy of our Savior. They were hurting, he was hurting with them. They, they were suffering loss at their brother dying three days ago. He was hurting with them and suffering loss with them. And God, it teaches, if you go to Romans chapter 12, please, God teaches that that is what we're to have. We're to have empathy with our brothers and sisters in Christ. And what that means is when our brothers and sisters hurt, we're to hurt with them. And when they rejoice, we're to rejoice with them. That's what empathy means. Is we share. We share the pain and we share the joy. Notice Romans chapter 12 verse 15. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. That's empathy. So Christ not only displayed his, his love and his compassion... But he displayed genuine empathy when he wept with Mary and Martha and their friends. And then with, if you would look at Hebrews 13, chapter 13, verse 3, again, we'll see where God commands that we are to have this sort of empathy one for another. Hebrews 13, 3, Paul here, we think it's Paul, but Hebrews 13, 3, it says, Remember them that are in bonds as bound with them. And them which suffer adversity as being yourselves also in the body. So he's saying, as you remember those that are in bonds, people that are in prison, people that are in prison for their faith, remember them as if you were there with them, it says. As if you're bound with them. And so Jesus didn't weep because Lazarus was dead. He wept because his friends were weeping. And he was showing us true human empathy, if you will, that he was 100% God, but he was also 100% man. And that was necessary for him to be our perfect substitute and now our perfect high priest. And so we see our Savior displaying his love, we see him displaying his compassion, his empathy, but, but lastly we also see him showing again his humanity. Christ was perfect, Christ was God in the flesh, but in the end, Christ was also a man for those 33 years, and we must never forget that. And he did all that for us, but he was human. Go to John chapter 4, and I'll show you that Jesus Christ, though he was God in the flesh, he also got tired like we get tired, because he was in a human body. And our bodies aren't perfect. The older we get, the more we realize that. But notice John 4, 6. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. 
Because often we think, well, since he was God, he was a superhuman. Now, he was a superhuman in the sense that he was sinless. But he wasn't a superhuman in that he got tired like we get tired. He had to sleep like we have to sleep. He had to drink like we have to drink and eat like we have to eat. He was human. He grew up with parents. He grew up helping his father in his carpentry business. He was a human. And he was a human for one reason, and that was for us. So that now, as our high priest, Jesus Christ understands. Go to Hebrews chapter 2, and I'll show you this. It's a beautiful, beautiful truth here in Hebrews 2. I look down in verse uh, 17 of Hebrews 2 as we reflect on the humanity of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, verse 17, Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, and make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Notice it says, like unto his brethren. He was made like us. For the express purpose of being our perfect substitute and now our perfect intercessor, our perfect high priest, as we saw in Hebrews 4, tempted in all points like as we are yet without sin. When you come to Jesus, that's why it says in the next verse in Hebrews, let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace. Why? Because we know that our high priest has been there. He has suffered what we suffer. He has been tempted like we're tempted. He's hurt like we hurt, and he understands. And God says that it should encourage us to know that. That's as the in early part of the verse says. We're, we're not a high priest who cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmity. In other words, doesn't understand. He does understand. <coughs> and here we see him displaying that when he chose to weep with his friends. And the Jews, if you go back to our passage there in John 11, the Jews didn't understand <coughs> those that were around. Why Jesus wept, it says in verse 36, Behold how he loved him. They thought he was weeping because of Lazarus. But we all know what happens in the next part of the story. They didn't know that Jesus is about to bring Lazarus back from the dead. He wasn't weeping because of Lazarus. He was weeping because of Mary and Martha and their friends. And it's so beautiful to see that in setting an example for us of, of servanthood, of sacrifice, and so many other ways that Jesus took the time to go back, to be with his friends, and to weep with them. Just prior to, notice it goes on to say, uh, verse 37, some of them said, could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Which is the same thing that, that Martha said. Lord, if you would have come sooner, you could have healed him. And they're saying, if he's so great, why did he let Lazarus die? Same, same reason. He let him die so that he could now display something that he hadn't displayed yet. And that is, he has the power over death. Verse 38, Jesus therefore again, groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. Groaning again, not because of Lazarus, because of all the pain around him, all the grief. And he's showing us, I want you to be compassionate. I want you to be empathetic. I want you to love your brothers and sisters as I've loved you. And he, he is the perfect example of that. And so verse 39, take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh. Well, it's true. Three days. Doesn't take long. That is an interesting thing to say to the perfect Son of God who created the universe, but are you sure you want us to roll the stone away, Lord? Because it could be pretty smelly in there. That's what she said. 
He's been dead four days. Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Then they took the stone away from the place where the dead was laid. Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people, it was all about the people. Because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus. all for the people. He didn't raise Lazarus from the dead for his own pleasure, his own glory, anything. He did it for the people to see the power that he had over death. He did it for them to understand. This one not only has the power to heal, he also is, is human enough to weep when we weep when his friends weep, but also has the power to actually bring someone back from the dead who's been in the grave for four days. Wow. Jesus wept. He really couldn't have set much more of a beautiful example of true humanity, true Christian love, than at this incident here at the, at the grave of Lazarus. And I think he wanted us to learn something put them into practice. Love as I have loved you, God said. Weep with them that do weep. Rejoice with them that rejoice. Be that kind of Christian. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, I want to thank you for the example of our beautiful and wonderful Savior and what he did for us here, what he did for them, and the lessons that he taught us, Lord. And I pray that we'll take these lessons and we'll, we'll live them. Will be the kind of Christian that loves as Jesus loved and had the compassion of Christ and the empathy of Christ, Lord. And may we remember these things, make them real in our, our walk. Thank you for Jesus and all he did for us. Thank you, he loves us and died and rose again and now intercedes for us and understands. And may we remember every time the pain comes, the suffering, the persecutions, the frustrations, whatever. May we understand Jesus has been there. And may it just encourage us when we come to our high priest. So thank you, Lord. We love you. We pray for your will in our hearts now as we have this invitation time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If we could all please.